Hey there, welcome to the Screencast-O-Matic version of how to deal with non-linear patterns and tables. And uh, here we go. Problems like this come up in class all the time, sometimes on standardized tests. And I made this quick and easy little slideshow to walk you through how you can deal with this. Okay, first of all, here's an example of what I'm talking about. Got a little series of uh, patterns here. And uh, they grow. In this case, sometimes they shrink. But they grow. We've got a uh, series of questions to answer. But the first one is uh, usually in a problem like this, asks you to draw the figure that would come before this and figures that come after this. That's problems. Z figures 0, 4, and 5. We're going to do this in one take, so sorry about the stammering there. Okay, and then finally we're going to generalize a pattern by writing a rule, an equation, okay? Um, sometimes a table will help that, and that's where we have this down here. Okay, so first of all, let's see if we can figure out what the pattern is here, all right? What I see, take the easy ones first, right? I see this little square in the pattern stays the same every time. That's called a constant, okay? One is a constant. That means whatever my equation ends up being, there's going to be a 1 in it. Okay, so that's constant. That's easy. Next, I notice this little shape up on the top here. And uh, this is, I chose blue here. The blue ones stay the same as the figure number. Okay, so figure 1 has 1 square. Figure 2, 2 squares, and so on. Figure 3, 3 squares. Okay, so as you can tell, one way to break these shapes down, especially as they get more complex, is instead of looking at it as a whole shape, break it down into its little parts and pieces, and sometimes it's easier to see the growth that way. And you could think of each one of these highlighted colors as a term in the equation, which we're later going to simplify. So think of these blue terms as the x's, right? If the figure number is the x value, then the blue sections are the same as the figure number. Okay, next I saw this uh, green piece hanging out over here. Okay, and what I noticed there is it is also growing by one, but in the way it relates to the figure number or the x value, I've got figure one, but then I've got two squares here. I've got figure two has three squares. So what I notice is the green rectangle highlighted section here is the figure number plus one. Figure number is x, so we're gonna call the green section x plus one. Moving on, here's the fun part. Okay, we've got our red, blue, and green sections kind of taken care of there. And now I've got this yellow stuff here, these squares. I notice three by three, four by four, five by five. So they're growing, but they're growing in two dimensions, right? They're going across and down at the same time. So it's harder to account for that. It's not growing at a constant rate. Like this was plus one to get here, plus one to get there. So it was the green, right? It was a plus one, plus one, and so on. Uh, so how do we account for this? Well, let's see if we can relate it to the figure numbers, since all of our previous calculations and terms related to the figure number. I've got figure one, and I've got a three square. I have a figure two has a four square. Do you see a relationship here? Figure three has a five square. What I'm noticing is the square, the dimensions of the square, are the figure number plus two. Right, three plus two is five, two plus two is four, one plus two is three. So there's my connection to the figure number, or the x value, okay? So how about figure number plus 2, then square it? That's one way we can put this in algebraic terms. Does that make sense? Figure number plus 2, and then square that. Let's put all these observations into an equation, okay? Think back to our constant, right? 1 is happening every time. So no matter what the equation is, there's going to be a positive 1 in it. Ah, uh, there it is, right, in red. Next, we did the blue section. Remember, that was x. That's the figure number up here. 
So our equation is also going to have an X in it. There's my blue. Green. Where'd the green go? There it is. Green, we decided, was figure number plus one, right? Figure number plus one. So that's two, three, four. I go back to my equation here. There's my figure number plus one in green. And then finally, as we figured out the squares, figure number plus two, then square it. I put that in black here. Yellow doesn't show up that great on paper. Um, anyway, the square of the figure number plus two. So here are all my terms. I've got four terms or four sections of that shape. If I just write them all down here, I kind of flipped the order around to put the numbers last, trying to stay in order of power in my equation here. But I've got x plus 2 squared plus 2x. I got the 2x from right here. I got the figure number from the blue, and I also have the figure number from the green. So there's two of them. Then I have the 1, my constant, over here in red. And I also have a constant over here in green. That's where my figure number plus 1. The figure number changed, but the 1 stays the same. I add them together, I get a two. So there's an equation that's gonna summarize those pictures. Let's test it out by using the values that we know, meaning one is gonna be my figure number, and if I substitute the one into my big long equation here, there's where you see the one and the one right there in place of the x, right? I put a one there instead of x, I put a one here instead of x. Then I complete the square, I do my uh, multiplication and addition last, and I get my 13. And if we refer back to the original shape, right, I can count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's a way of checking my work on this. That all seems to work out. That tells me my equation looks good. Okay, figure 2, I did the same thing. Substituted 2. For my x, I put 2 plus 2 squared and 2 times 2 right here, 2 plus 2, bam, get my 22. We can go back and count, but at this point, we see that this is working out just fine. So you could get another question, follow-up, if you will, on something like this, where it would ask you, how many tiles would figure 23 have, or how many tiles would figure 100 have? And we would just do the same thing. You see I'm uh, substituting the 23 in here instead of x back in my equation, right? 23 went there, 23 went there. I get this huge number. Definitely I'm not going to be drawing that one on paper, but it's cool to know that if I did, or if I had maybe a technology-based application for this, there would be 673 squares in that figure. It's a good way to calculate the area if you're drawing blueprints or whatnot. Okay, that's it. Stay tuned on how to graph these things and also awesome, tasty paleo breakfast recipes. Okay, let's recap real quick. We had these shapes. We isolated the different components, the terms, right? We had red, blue, green, yellow. We broke it into four different pieces so we could easily identify the different components. We took those different parts, made an equation out of it, and then did a little checking of our work, substituted, saw that it worked. Awesome. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll try an old school version of this too and see which one gets more views. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps on these complex nonlinear patterns. Goodbye.